One of the things we're trying to do is to try and tell the story of how people are making social care work. There are some great people working in the sector who are making it work as well as they possibly can. And they're making it work because they care and they go the extra mile. And it's more than a job for them. Not my background, come from banking, uh, but really, really, really enjoy what I do. Otherwise, I don't think I'd still be here. And my main aim is just to provide and promote the standards amongst the staff to, to give a really good service to these vulnerable people that find themselves having to come into care. Just to make sure they're happy, okay. they're content, mm -hmm. just to make sure we provide a good service to them so they like they live still on, like in their own home. And we're looking at everything from daycare to respite to transitional beds um, because obviously there are a lot of people that are in hospital whose aim is to go back home but they're just not quite ready. So that's in the process at the moment. The plans have been submitted and hopefully with Calderdale and CQC support by the end of the year we hope to have another six bedroom unit up and, up and running which will be sort of run parallel to Valley View but it'll be, dif it'll be different. We're very much into dementia. Mm. Uh, we have four EMI registered beds here at Valley View, but quite a huge population that are starting to come into care do have some form of dementia, Alzheimer's and capacity issues. But with that, I feel they're physically fitter. So you've got two. You're, you've either got you know people that are physically infirm or sadly you know are dealing with capacity issues so we're very much into dementia we do sort of quite a lot of activities I think that we'll be providing a really good service and respite because we're only such a small home here we can't keep certain beds just for respite and so many families that are in the community that need that you know that little bit of a break and they feel like they're coming on a holiday I can only do as I have a vacancy whereas this will hopefully be able to provide somewhere where people can can pre-book so you know, we knew that for Valley View to stand still as it as, as it is now it is not where the future is going to be because by the time someone does need to come into care the needs are so much higher you know, so we, we have to move with the times to help uh, meet the needs. Um, our own personal relationship manager, who's really friendly, approachable, efficient. She drops an email, she's called Michelle Wright. She's been wonderful for Valley View. Because I'm sure I'm not the only provider that has felt like these challenges and funding and vacancy levels, because obviously people are staying at home, you know, there's come a time where you think, gosh, is this really what I want to do and do I want to carry on? So I think that the council in the last 18 months have been the, the best support that I've found we've ever had. We decided um, that we'd base it on the worst business model going, which was to charge our customers the least, um, pay our staff the most, uh, provide permanent contracts rather than zero hours contracts. And we'd aim the business um, in the first instance in the Upper Valley um, area of Calderdale, uh, which we felt was a, a lack of services. 500 care calls a day, um, about 2,000 hours a week we're doing. I've worked with 60, 70 different local authorities and uh, NHS establishments. The, the thing that I, I, I find really refreshing about um, Calderdale is it's creative, um, it's innovative, it's uh, solution focused, positive. And, and, and there's lots of informal networks, of people working together to achieve something which you couldn't possibly achieve um, in, in a singular format. Um, so that works really well. Uh, get lots of support from the local social work teams, district nurses, GPs. One young lady that came into the office um, asking for a, an apprenticeship when we first started. Um, 17 years of age, heels that tall and eyelashes out here. Um, and I, oh, What's she going to be like working with some, you know, quite mardy elderly people at times and, you know, delivering personal care and, uh, 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 and, and she was absolutely fantastic. She'd walk around the streets of Mytham Road, Hebden Bridge, um, you know, two miles, two and a half miles, just, just to go do a 15 minute security check on somebody to make sure that they're taking the medication or that they were all right. Um, she was doing social calls on a, on a voluntary basis, so 
um, those customers that uh, didn't have a large package of support um, or few relatives or family. She would go visit them in her own time. She's now progressed on to nursing after her apprenticeship and, you know, a, a real success story. When my son told me that the roads were closing on Boxing Day morning, we lost £25,000 worth of stock. Our uh, retail shop was five foot underwater. The offices were underwater. No telephones, no electricity. Software gone down for the rotor system. Staff team were absolutely superb. Of course, it's Boxing Day. Rescue services were finding it difficult to come through. Most people were on shutdown for the Christmas break. We did 529 care calls. We had at least 20 carers whose houses were flooding at the time whilst they were out providing care. And we coordinated everything from the, our kitchen at our house in Blackshaw Head. People were superb. They knew the calls that they needed to do. They were physically pushing people in wheelchairs, rescuing them out of their houses which were flooding, and then going up the street waste in water. And there was nowhere for these people to go. So our carers took those elderly people home and cared for them at home in their own houses. And we've had discussions with nearby local authorities. But to be honest with you, I've turned that down and walked away from it. There's an approach from Calderdale which enables me to take risks. It enables me to be entrepreneurial. And it enables me to deliver the right outcomes for customers. And... If I get it wrong or my team gets it wrong, then there's a supportive network of people to help me get it right. On a Monday I go to Eyes, we run a shop, it's up Hampton Lane. Everything clothes, sweets, biscuits, everything they can get their hands on. I go to Scope on a Friday and we might be we go swimming every week. Nearly every week. Uh, we work with uh, thirty eight schools at the moment and uh, over the next couple of months for example We'll be doing homelessness prevention workshops in these 38 schools. And the deals with the heads is that they ask the children to bring in a tin of beans, some toothpaste, some deodorant, etc., etc. And we get sufficient food and hygiene goods from those presentations to actually last us the, the, the next 12 months. We have an education centre whereby we undertake life skills training. We've got an allotment. So from March through to uh, October, we teach people to grow their own fruit and veg. We've always got waiting lists. I think in the last 12 months we've had, the minimum has been something like 20 people on the waiting list, uh, but the maximum has been about 100 people on the waiting list. Oh, I've got a fantastic uh, relationship with Calderdale Council. We've just acquired the building where you're uh, making this interview and we had to refurbish it. It cost us in the region £80,000 and the council gave us a couple of teams, day to make a different days, where they actually came painting and decorating. You can always pick up the phone to the commissioners and also we work with Calderdale Adult Learning and Safer and Stronger Communities. We've just uh, taken over a new uh, contract uh, which is to uh, support people with mid to high mental health issues. So the, the, the job now is to embed that new service and uh, to make sure it's a success. Also there's been highlighting the key areas going forward and homelessness was one of those areas identified. So. The next job is to recruit another member of staff to try and get the waiting list down a little bit further. Yeah, I suppose it, it is, it's to uh, inspire and support people on a journey back to independence. And I go to advocate groups every fortnight with Karen. And you speak up and listen. Do voluntary work. Oxfam in Halifax, Monday, Friday, Friday and Saturday. If there is any problems, I take them back to partnership board. I got a award last time from Advocate because this house, I were up, this house were up for a tender before, so, yeah, and I took it to social services. We have a member of the contracts team who we have a communication deal with daily if we need it. It's always there very supportive if we have any issues or concerns or just general inquiries, um, things that we're not too sure about. We, we just either email Ruth or we, or we ring her on the phone and, and she's always, you know, straight back to us within a 24 hours, really. So if we've anything that we need clarification on, then we, we, we just contact the, the contracts team, any safeguarding alerts, you know, gateway to care. And everyone's always been really helpful. process with Calderdale Council is, is, is quite easy. It's not a difficult process. The safeguarding alert form is, is quite easy to fill in. And yeah, they've always been really supportive. Come round and, and give us recommendations and then give us a chance to sort of like work on those recommendations and then tell us where 
you know, think we could do a little bit more or where we excel in. Um, so no, it's good to have their input. When we first set up the service, we had um, planning permission, which basically limited the number of clients coming to the service to 20 a day. Currently, I have 44 clients on our attendance register over the week. Our busiest day only contains 20 clients. And we felt as the services around us were closing down, more and more clients were approaching us with regards to our service and having to turn people away because we just don't have the places for them anymore. So we are currently, with the help of the trustees, applying for variation on conditions to increase our numbers to 30 a day. We want to make our clients' lives add a bit extra to their fulfilment of their life. But on a daily basis, we just want them to enjoy coming to our skill shop and that when they go home, they've enjoyed their day. Love, care and happiness, I think, are what goes into making a great social care provider. And it's happening. We just need to spread the word that these things can be made to work.